First of all, to start with um, Aris Subtelny, who um, produced um, the main history of Ukraine in English uh, up to that point in 1988 and later modified it in several editions. And I think all all of us who study the history of Ukraine owe a great debt to Aris Subtelny. Um, this was the book on which we relied uh, in courses, our courses, but also courses in Ukraine uh, for some time. And it came out at a very important time, which were the later years of perestroika in Ukraine, identified with uh, Mikhail Gorbachev's leadership of the USSR, um, a period of intensive change, but also a time when I think communist authorities were, if not being openly flouted, at least seriously questioned. And Gorbachev himself had started a campaign of de-Stalinization, uh, one that led to the exposure of a number of major crimes in Ukraine, as in other republics, um, mass graves being found at Bikivnia, for example. And therefore, um, there was a question really of what use uh, are Soviet textbooks in schools and higher education. I mean, they're all so much propagandized and so much full of rhetoric that really um, they're just unreliable and, and, and they're pretty, pretty well useless for students. And I think students in Ukraine were getting most of their instruction from the instructors themselves. In other words, the teachers in the classroom were the only ones really who could convey what had happened to uh, Ukraine in the past. And so tell this book, um, a very long book, I would say its main focus is on the 20th century, but he certainly covers the whole period. And he looks at Ukraine from a Ukrainian perspective. That is, he doesn't always give equal treatment to um, other ethnic groups that lived in Ukraine at the time. He focuses on the story of Ukrainians from earliest times to the present. And for a long time, there was really no rival to that book. There had not really been any prequel. Um, other than um, Doroshenko's book, uh, which was uh, now very outdated, um, a brief history by Roman Shpoluk uh, that I believe came out in the late 70s or early 80s, but was never intended to be a major textbook. Um, and so until about um, 1995 or six, when Magoci's book also began to um, be disseminated, but Magoci's book... Uh, did focus on, on all the other groups of Ukraine. It was not so much a specific history of Ukrainians. Um, the two of them have, of course, something of a history, but um, I understand they did get along in the later part of their careers. Um, since that happened, we've had a textbook by Serhii Yakelchik, which came out, I think, in 2007. But that focused on 20th century Ukraine. And then more recently... Uh, Serhii Plocki's book on Ukraine at the Gates of Europe, um, another large volume, but one that focuses, I think, on the connections between Ukraine and Europe and sees that as the path for future Ukraine. So everything really began with Orest, and um, I didn't see him a lot in his last 10 years. I used to see him quite regularly on the conference circuit in different parts of the world. He was always very open and friendly, uh, willing to discuss any aspect of Ukrainian studies. And um, certainly, um, we all regret his passing last week. 